I believe that Aerodrome's native token called Aero will shock the world during this bull run and hypothetically go to the price of $50. And of course, that's not financial advice nor guarantee. But why do I think so? I think it's going to come down to the fact that Aerodrome has rock solid, that's what she said, fundamentals. I mean, you got to think about this, right? Aerodrome Finance is an automated market maker that is designed to serve as the central liquidity hub for base. And now when it comes to what is base all about, I'm going to get to that a little bit later on in the video. But I first want to explain what an automated market maker is because it sounds very complicated, sounds very fancy, but it's actually not that hard to understand because an automated market maker, aka a AMM, is a type of decentralized exchange that uses algorithmic mechanisms to facilitate the trading of digital assets. I mean, God, I, boha, that's a mouthful. Again, that's what she said, but it is what it is. That's how amazing Aerodrome is. And by the way, Base is Coinbase's layer two network, and it was built in collaboration with Optimism. And of course, when it comes to Optimism, it's one of the biggest Ethereum layer two scaling solutions out there. So yeah, when it comes to base, it's the real deal. Now, when I see the term layer two, some people, they may be wondering, okay, why does Ethereum benefit something from a layer two, right? Why is it beneficial to something like that? Is it Ethereum fantastic? You know, those Ethereum fanboys, they like to pull out their pom-poms and G-strings and lead the captain edition Broadworks extenders because they think that Ethereum is perfect. But in my opinion, it benefits greatly from a layer two because... We take a look at how Ethereum sky high gas fees. I mean, that can't be denied, right? I mean, God, I, if someone wants to send their girlfriend's boyfriend's grandma some ETH to buy a used a G string lead the captain edition, right? If they want to do that, can you imagine the gas fees they're going to have to pay for that? I mean, the ETH gas fees, God, I, it's no bueno if you ask me. Not such a good thing. And also on top of that, let's not forget Ethereum. It's arguably not even scalable as of right now. I mean, we take a look at Charles Hoskinson, who's the co-founder of Ethereum, by the way. He's no random Joe Schmo in their mom's basement eating Cheetos, Doritos, and Papa John's pizza. That's not the case. Again, co-founder of Ethereum also happens to, by the way, be the founder of Cardano. But yeah, besides that point, according to Charles, you know, he claims that it may take Ethereum a couple more years potentially to even achieve scalability. I mean, that's crazy, right? And the fantastic thing about a Ethereum layer two scaling solution is that quite essentially, it allows Ethereum to be enjoyed, but at the same time, right? Again, not having to deal with the high gas fees and scalability issues. That's very fantastic if you ask me, because Ethereum, let's face it, ecosystem is very diverse, but fundamental compromises. So that's where an Ethereum layer two steps in. And I think Ethereum benefits greatly from something like a layer two. So Optimism, it's fundamentally fantastic, has an amazing use case. And I think Base is also very wonderful as well. And again, right, it's Coinbase's layer two network. I mean, Coinbase, it's one of the biggest exchanges out there. So it's not like, you know, it's some random caca, you know, enterprise making it, right? That's not the case. It's not like it's some random company, if you know what I mean. But yeah. Let's not forget, when it comes to base, as of right now, it's already doing very well. I mean, you got to take into consideration how, according to DeFi Llama, and of course, DeFi stands for Decentralized Finance, you know, according to them, base has a total value lock of over $1.5 billion as we speak. I mean, over $1.5 billion. God, I, boha. You know, when I see a statistic that crazy, you know, it not only makes me want to take a shower, even though I already have, but it also makes me want to speak some Portuguese because that's how amazing it is. You know, when things are great, you have to start speaking some Portuguese. God, I, if you know what I mean. And let's not forget, right? Again, an automated market maker, it's a type of decentralized exchange. And as we all know, a decentralized exchange, it falls under the category of the market of decentralized finance. And keep in mind, the decentralized finance market, it's no joke if you ask me, because according to Grandview Research, the decentralized finance market could potentially be worth over $200 billion by 2030. I mean, that's crazy, right? That's bigger than a lot of countries' GDP. So again, the decentralized finance market, it's no joke. Unlike Baker Mayfield, which is a complete bust in my opinion. I mean, Baker Mayfield, what was he even doing as the first overall pick? I mean, come on, man. Cocky, size, not really there. 
I mean, I'd much rather prefer a giant, a howitzer of an arm, like Josh Allen, if you know what I mean. That guy, he's a real NFL quarterback. You take a look at Lamar Jackson, extremely dynamic, fantastic. One, two MVPs, right? So when it comes to base, it's amazing. When it comes to optimism, it's fantastic, which of course, base is built in collaboration with optimism. One of the biggest layer twos out there, right? Optimism for Ethereum, of course. Now we take a look at how Aerodrome Finance, really, it has the makings of something that could be so successful. And now keep in mind, the native token of Aerodrome, called Aero, at the price of $50, may sound crazy to some people, but I don't think so. Because if it were to go to the price of $50, considering its current circulating supply, you know, at that point, market cap would be around $21 billion. And are you kidding me? And of course, it's not kidding, but we take a look at how SHIB, all-time high market cap, was around $40 billion, And of course, SHIB is the main token of the Shiba Inu ecosystem. We take a look at how Doge, all-time high market cap, is around $88 billion. So is $21 billion really all that much? I don't think so. Now, of course, Doge and SHIB has a lot of fans. But Aerodrome, its number of fans is increasing by the day. And also on top of that, it's fundamentally fantastic. So... It's not that much, in my opinion, $21 billion market cap for something this fantastic. And keep in mind, this bull run could be so legendary because when you think about it, more crypto owners than ever before in history, which is a verifiable fact, by the way, you know, according to Crypto.com research, there's nearly 600 million crypto owners as of right now, which is nearly double the amount when compared to the peak of the 2021 bull run. So keep that in mind again, right? 2021 bull run, the peak of it, only around 300 million crypto owners, now nearly 600 million. You know, as of right now, also more institutional investors than ever before and more enterprise adoption than ever before as well. So the peak of this bull run, really the sky's the limit. I think it could really put the 2021 bull run to shame. And of course, I don't think the peak of the altcoin season is here yet. I don't think it's going to happen in the next 10 days or maybe even the next 20 days. Absolutely not. The reason for that, of course, that's not financial advice. The reason is because, historically speaking, altcoins, they do typically reach their peak anywhere between 6 to 18 months after a Bitcoin halving event. Now, as you all know, the Bitcoin halving event it very recently happened, you know, just a number of days ago, right? Ever since I made this video. Of course, I'm making this video right now. But yeah, it happened this April. So when we take that into consideration, that's potentially 6 to 18 months from right now for altcoins to truly showcase what they're capable of. And of course, we can't predict the exact date to a T, but there is a range there, right? Again, 6 to 18 months. Now, best case scenario, 6 months, that'd be October of this year, right? But worst case, that would be October of next year, which is 18 months from right now in 2025. But I don't think that even if it's, let's say, 18 months, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because if anything, that's actually more time for me to dollar cost average into Arrow, and of course, the strategy that I use for all the cryptocurrencies that I own is dollar cost averaging. So, anytime I earn income, I set aside some for my favorite projects. I just keep accumulating more and more. I just hold and I just wait for the peak of the bull run. That's it. I don't day trade, I don't use leverage, I don't swing trade, I don't do that. I'm not like one of those people out there that pulls up a price chart, draws a random triangle, and screams at the top of their lungs how it's a double 69, standing 69, you got to use 69x leverage. You know, they draw their grandma's G string or thong or whatever, or lingerie set, and they say bull flag, cup and handle. It's like, no one cares about that, man. No one cares about a bull flag. No one cares about a cup and handle. Come on, man, I'm not drinking coffee, even though I never drink coffee. But yeah, you get my point, right? Dude, it's like, it makes no sense. What I do is I focus on the fundamentals because I do believe that fundamentals do win at the end of the day. A lot of people out there, they make a video on Aerodrome, but they don't even know what it's about. They just talk about the price. But I focus on the fundamentals, then I focus on the price. Because again, I do believe that fundamentals do win at the end of the day. I'm extremely bullish on Aerodrome, and I don't see why Aero at the peak of this bull run won't go, hypothetically, to the price of $50. At least that's the way I view it. I think it's that special. And make sure to subscribe if you gain value from this video. I'd greatly appreciate it. And also on top of that, make sure to check out this very fantastic video. I think you all would really love it. It's been Lee the Captain, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. I'm out. Peace! Bye.